in previous videos, we have discussed how to find the manipulated variable and the responding variable from the question itself. So in this videos, I'm going to show you a few examples from the past year questions, uh, how to identify the manipulated variable and responding variable from the questions. Let's have a look at the first questions. This is the past year 2010 paper three question one. And the question sounds like this. A student carries out an experiment to investigate the relationship between the length L of a coil of wire worn around a test tube and its number of turns N. Uh, wooden calipers are used to measure the length L of the coil. Okay, so this is a diagram given. So we use this uh, wooden calipers to measure the length. The so-called length L is the distance from the first turns of wire to the last turns of wire. So this is L, okay? And then the students investigate the relationship between the length of the coil and the number of turns. So these are the two variables given in the questions. And we know that from the previous videos, okay, one of it must be the manipulated variable and another ones must be the responding variable. However, how do we tell that which one is the manipulated variable? We read the questions of the second part. So the second part of the question says that the procedure of measurement is repeated with number of turns n equal to 10, 15, 20, and 25. Okay, manipulated variable is the variable that control by the experimentals. So the students change the number of turns from 10 to 15 to 20 to 25. So this is something that controlled by the students and therefore this is the manipulated variable. So that's how we tell that whether it's a manipulated variables or responding variable. So for these questions, the manipulated variable is the number of turns of the coils. Okay. And the responding variable is the length of the coil. Okay. The length of the coil. Okay. Uh, how about the fixed variable? Fixed variable is a variable that we cannot change. We must keep it unchanged or keep it constant throughout the experiment. In this case, normally to find a fixed variable, we try to observe or try to see the diagram and then uh, try to think about which variables must be keep unchanged. Okay, in this case, actually uh, the students are measuring the diameters uh, or the thickness of the wire and the thickness of the wire must be kept constant. If you change the thickness of the wire, then you are going to uh, get different result, okay? So the thickness of the wire or the diameters of the wire or the wire itself must be kept constant. Okay. So therefore the fixed variable is the thickness of the wire or the wire or the diameters of the wire. Okay. So that's how we identify the manipulated variable and the responding variable from the question itself. Let's see one more questions. This is a uh, past year 2011 paper three question one. A student carries out an experiment to investigate the relationship between the depth of immersion D of a cylinder steel rod and the buoyant force FB. The apparatus set up for this experiment is shown in diagram 1.1. So this is diagram 1.1. The readings of the spring balance WO is 10 newtons. So the student investigate the relationship between the depth of immersions and the buoyant force. So these two must be the, the two variables. However, we still don't know which one is the manipulated variable or, and which one is the responding variable. Let's check the second part of the questions. The experiment is repeated with the immersion depth of D, 10, 15, 20, 25. So this is something that controlled by the students and this must be the manipulated variable. Therefore, the immersion depth is the manipulated variable. So. Manipulated variable is the depth of immersions of the cylinder and uh, responding variable is the buoyant force. Okay. What about the fixed variable? To find the fixed variable, we must try to identify what other variable will affect the buoyant force. And as we know that the buoyant force F is given by the formula F equal to rho V g okay rho is the densities of the liquid v is the volumes of the liquid and g is the gravitational field strength 
Now, uh, normally we can't change the gravitational field strength, okay? And uh, V is the volume of the liquid, and this is something that we control, okay? This is something we control. This is a manipulated variable. And therefore, the only variable that we must keep constant is the density, the densities of the liquid, okay? Densities of the liquid. And therefore, in this experiment, we must use the same liquid throughout the experiment. That is the water. So we must use water. We cannot replace water with other liquid like alcohol or, or brine, which is a salt water. No, we cannot do that. So uh, this is the variable that must be kept constant. That is the densities of the liquid. Uh, we must use the same liquid. Okay, so you see, that's how we identify the manipulated variable and responding variable from the questions. And we try to find the fixed variable by investigating the factors that affect the responding variable to see which one will change the result or may change the result and then we keep it constant.